Hello dear rebounding friends. Today's theme is movement. We don't show you exercises today, but we will move your brain so that you can move your body later even better. You will learn today why movement is so important for our body and how our body, body is functioning and how he is functioning with or without movement. And the second thing you will learn why rebounding is such a great way of movement. I would like to introduce you today to a great book that is called Vigo, that is the word movement in German. And this book is written by Jörg Blech. Jörg Blech is an author. Uh, he studied uh, medicine and biology. And uh, in fact, what did he study? He studied bio, biochemy and biology in Germany and England. And uh, he is an author of medical article in large German newspapers and magazines. And what he did is he compiled all cutting edge scientific information and put it in this book. And uh, I find it so important that I would like to read you some of the most important articles. And uh, what I did, as this whole thing is written in German, I translated it into English. Of course, it's my English, it's not your English, and I hope you can understand at least the meaning of it. So, let's go. Why our physical body needs movement. MD of evolutionary medicine, Frank Booth, retraces most diseases of the civilized world back to a stagnation in our metabolic system due to physical inactivity. As a minimum requirement of daily movement, he and other researchers see 30 minutes of moderate movement during at least five days a week. As inactive, they define everything that is below these 30 minutes. They say, Without this minimum of physical activity, it is likely that a pathological gene expression leads to chronic diseases. And you'll find, by the way, you'll find the, um, the, the quote and the, um, the, the source of uh, this article um, on my website, www.rebounding.tv, uh, in the section, in the comment section just below, here below this video. So if you want to go further into this matter, you can find it there. So, what does that mean? He continues, that means the body of everybody who does not exercise at least half an hour per day is in a state of emergency. In the cells and in the tissues run permanently sickening processes and it seems to be only a matter of time before they turn into disease. Consequently, the old concept in regards to physical activity has to be thought over. Movement is not at all a useful add-on to strengthen our health. In the contrary, it is the condition for a normal functioning of our body. Now we've learned that we need movement and probably a bit more than we thought. Next question is, what kind of movement do we need? Do you know that you have about double as much lymphatic fluid in your body than you have blood? You do. And you don't have any pump for it. So for the heart, you know, you have, for the, for the blood you have your heart, and for the lymphatic fluid you have nothing. You have something, but you didn't need to do something for that to work. You have your calves. In German we call the calves also the second heart, and that is why when you are jogging on or when you're rebounding, that means when you have an up and down movement, your calves are pumping the lymphatic fluid back up in your body. Yeah, when you're doing nothing, it's just sinking down with gravity and it needs to be pumped back in your upper system so that you have a circulation going on. The lymph, lymph fluid is also much uh, more um, and much less liquid than the blood. Uh, it takes about one full day to circle through the body. So you need definitely this up and down movement for to pump your lymph fluid through your body. And the second thing is the cartilage. Now, where do we have cartilage? We have cartilage all over the place. Basically, between bones. Wherever you have two bones, and that's all, uh, everywhere we have joints, you know, you have cartilage. On top of the bone, 
bones, you know, because you cannot have bone on bone. I mean, who has it knows how hurting that is. So you have cartilage. Yeah? It's a little bit of shock absorber and it helps a smoother movement. You have cartilage in your knees, you have cartilage in your spine, you know. Each of your discs in between the vertebras is made out of cartilage. Now there's a funny thing about cartilage, which you may or may not know. When you're about 20 years old, you lose the red blood cells in your cartilage. Before that age, you have red blood cells in the cartilage. They are there to nourish your cartilage and also to bring all the building elements in your cartilage until your cartilage is fully built. That's at the age of about 18, 20. Now, what is afterwards? Afterwards, your body, your cartilage relies on an up and down movement in order to get nourished. Let's look at something here. Look. This is like a sponge, that's your cartilage. And here is a bone, and here is another bone. So how cartilage is functioning is when you're moving down, when you're at the lowest point of a bounce, or in jogging the down point, cartilage is pressed together. That means it releases, it releases all the toxins and all what it doesn't need anymore. And then in the highest point of the bounce, or when you're, you're running and the, when you're lifting up, the, uh, lift, lifting up, then the cartilage expands and it sucks in the, uh, the uh, nourishment from the environment. So that's what you're doing when you're bouncing. Bounce, bounce, bounce. That's how the cartilage is nourished. And you see, when you're bouncing on a rebounder, that's about 100 times per minute. Bounce, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up. That's how your cartilage is nourished. That is how your knees are nourished. That is how you rebuild your cartilage when you have lost cartilage in your knees and how you keep your cartilage healthy. And then, of course, in our spine. When you look at the spine, you see you have the vertebras, and then in between, in between each vertebra, you have a disc. The discs are our shock absorbers. So you want to keep your discs healthy. I show it a little bit closer so that you can see that, how that works when you're bouncing, when you're in the highest point. They're getting enlarged, and then in the lowest points, they're pressed together. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So that is what you're doing when you are on the rebounder. Now, that would also be the same, I mean, that is the same when you are jogging. Why then rebounding, why not jogging? And that's a very easy answer. It's just because of the impact on the joints. You know, it's a pretty heavy-duty impact which you get on your joints when you are jogging or running. It's just 100% of your weight going into the joints. While when you are bouncing on a high-quality rebounder, like the Bellicon bungee band rebounder, then it's 85% of the impact is taken out of the joints and you are left with only 15%. That's all for today. Uh, you know now how long you should bounce per day uh, or how, how long you should move altogether. That is 30 minutes and uh, that five times a week. That's at least what the scientists say that is the minimum what we need. And next time, in the next show, we will look how often a day you should bounce, if that has an impact, uh, the, uh, how often you bounce, or if you should bounce in one time. And then we will also look at what you said, how often you are bouncing and how long you are bouncing. You know, we have this nice blog here on the website and a lot of, uh, a lot of you have already answered to this question. And the other ones who have not yet, please give us your answer because next time we will look into that. I wish you a great week, bounce in good health.